I tell you what, Roger Burke skipped me the other night. I, I thought I'd preach out of Ezekiel. We were watching him. And uh, I thought, no, nah, he's burning my hat like that. I thought it was funny as the kids were taking up the offer and Annabeth came and said, Papa, I'll give you money. I said, well, maybe you can get blood from the turnip. I don't know. <laughs> she was pretty excited about it too. How many of you know that Christmas is coming? Right? Everybody started decorating and most of us started around Thanksgiving. Some people may have started even before Thanksgiving of, of, of starting to decorate for Christmas. And there's nothing wrong with getting prepared for Christmas. But the question I asked, have we truly gotten ourselves prepared for Christmas this morning? Have we truly gotten ourselves prepared for the real reason for the season? Uh, you say, Michael, it's not hardly Christmas yet. What are you doing preaching a Christmas message? Well, sometimes you, you've got to be prepared for when the time comes. This morning, if you've got your Bibles, you can turn it over to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, and, and, and he's going to have it, change going to have it on the screen. So, uh, And it is kind of the, the, the part of the, the Christmas story. We're going to start reading verse 1. And we're going to read Luke 2, 1 through 7. Luke 2, verse 1 says, It came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone with his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end. Verse 7 is a verse I want to read over again. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. I had a thought for just a little while would be the inhospitality to Jesus. The inhospitality to Jesus. Does somebody know what hospitality means? Spout it off. You know what it means. What does hospitality mean? To make welcome. <coughs> to make welcome Jesus. That's what this season's about, isn't it? To make welcome our Savior. The problem was when Jesus first came to earth, it's, it's kind of the same problem that's still going on today. Nobody has any room for Jesus in their life. Nobody has any time, any room for Jesus in their life. And, and with that, is we really need to get prepared for the season. And the season is not just... December 25th, around that holiday, that is, the season is all year long. The question I asked you this morning, church, is do you have room in your life for Him? Do you have room in your life for Him? The story goes that, that Bethlehem was, was too busy due to the time of the, uh, of, of the season that it was. I, I don't know for, for what reason that they, how often that they had to go and, and pay their taxes, but because of Joseph being from that, that area, uh, he had to go back and, and, and pay taxes into to Bethlehem. And it says that at that time that Mary uh, become ready to pop, kind of like Jenny. <laughs> they picked on us boys in Sunday school class all morning, so I've got to let them have it back. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but in that, 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 that for whatever reason was, the time come for her to be delivered. And at that time, that there was no room for them. So whether you believe that, that the son, that it was in a cave, and a, that they called that the, the, the stall, or whether it was in a barn, or whatever the reason was, that town had no room for Jesus at that time. That town had no room for our Savior. There was some inhospitality toward Jesus. 
You know what I find is funny is that we all say we have time for Jesus and we all want to, want to thump our Bibles. Has anybody ever seen anybody like that? They're a Bible thumper that they say they go to church and they've got their Bible. I read an interesting fact the other day that, that this Barner group estimates that 9 out of 10 Americans have at least one Bible in their house. That's not that hard to believe, is it? That 9 out of 10 people have a Bible in their house? So if that's the case, then they're... Uh, that, that most American homes have about five copies of the Bible in their house. And they estimated that if that was the case, then there would be 1,426,500,000 Bibles in America alone. And if that was the case, there would be enough Bibles just in America alone to be able to go around the world twice if they were placed end to end. So that being said, Jesus is in people's homes. Right? He's in the Word in people's homes. But have they applied that to their lives? In John, over in John chapter uh, 13, verses 34 and 35, I think Shane, I've loaded them up too. Jesus gives us a, an example of what it takes to truly have Jesus in our lives. To truly hospitably invite Him into our lives. Verse 13 and 34 and 35 says, A new commandment I give and give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have loved one another. That you have loved one another. That's how we know that God lives in us, right? Is that what he's saying? That's how God knows, that, or how the world knows that God lives in us by how we love others. <laughs> God knows that, that, that we know love because God, that's how we become to know true love is because we've accepted Jesus and he's, He is love, right? God is love. Does everybody agree with that? Is everybody awake? This is yes. This is no. Yeah, all right. Everybody's awake. What I saw this morning was true love. If you couldn't feel the presence of God in the room when everybody started coming together for one common cause. Because we've got a church member that's sick. That's the love that we have for one another. That's what being hospitable to God is all about. When you care about somebody enough to move on their behalf, when you care about someone enough to give up a little bit of your time to show them love. That's what the Christmas season is about. Are you this morning willing to be hospitable to God? Are you this morning willing to invite Jesus into your life? Now I'm not talking about just because you carry a Bible into church doesn't mean that you are being, that you're being hospitable to God. Or being hospitable to Jesus. Just because you come to church doesn't mean that you're being hospitable to Jesus in your life. Is there some inhospitality going on in your life that you've not given everything to Him? The Bible says that we can claim that He is Lord. Right? Let's get interactive again. What does that mean? What is the definition of Lord? Does anybody tell me? Jesus wants to be Lord over your life. The definition of Lord is someone or something having power, authority, or influence, a master or a Can you let God truly be Lord over your life and invite Him in? Invite Him in. Invite Him in to stay. That's the way He wants it. That's when you truly show the love for others. The love that Christ had for you is the love that you're supposed to show for others, right? The Bible tells us that He went to, prepare, to prepare, prepare a place for us. And He left us here. But He didn't leave us alone. He left us with a comforter. And with that comforter, it shows us how to love. Through Jesus' outpouring, it showed us how to love. This morning, I know it's a hectic morning. I've been distracted too. But are, are you truly... 
allowing Jesus into your life? Are you truly inviting Him to come in and abide in your life this morning? I know it's around the Christmas season and it seems like everything's so hectic. And and and, and I, I went to Annabeth's program the other night. And it touched me so much because they say that Jesus is not in our schools. Anybody heard that? Every little chance that people got to sing little solos in Annabeth's program was about Jesus. You know the way to get Jesus back in our schools? It's for our kids and us to take him there. You say, Mike, you're getting way off on a tangent. No, that's how we show love for others. It's to show them what Jesus truly is. To show them who he truly, truly is. To show them what he's done for them. I thought as a little girl sung, Happy Birthday, Jesus. That's the meaning of Christmas. You know, sometimes, and I'm guilty of it myself, we get tied up so much in the gifts that we've got others. What have we, what are we getting for others? And, and I'm not saying that that's bad because I, I get caught up in it as well. Because it's the spirit of giving. That's what Jesus did for us, right? He gave his life for us. But this season, let's plan to truly celebrate what Christmas is truly about. Let's get prepared, not just be prepared by getting our tree up and our decorations out and our Christmas dishes on the shelves and, 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 and worrying about making our, our, uh, our Christmas mix for everybody to munch on and everything else. But let's truly remember what Jesus truly is. And that's love. And through that love that He showed us, is we, we show others that's how we love Him. Is how we love others. This morning, I want you to bow your head. I usually put a keep it real moment in the sermon, but I want us to get real with ourselves right here, with our eyes closed. I want you to ask yourself this question. And you don't have to come to the altar and get things fixed up. If that's where God tells you to come, you better come there. But I want you to ask yourself the question, am I putting Jesus number one in my life? Am I putting Him first? Am I truly showing His love to others? When people hear me talk, am I glorifying Him? Glorifying myself? Or not very glorifying at all? And however you answer that question, I want you to say that if I'm not measuring up, I'm going to start today by making Him Lord of my life, by making Him the ruler over my life, by being an example to others for Him, by being light for Him. And if you can't measure up to that, if you can't say that, I pray that you, you turn your life over to Him and come and get things fixed up. Come and give it to Him. This morning as we stand. satisfaction in their life or heart if those that are rich just wants to get richer and, and it seems like those that are mean just want to get meaner because they don't have nowhere to go. There's no refuge. 
They don't make room for Jesus. I thought that. I was. There's people that break sin and steal. And it seems like they get a, a, a lighter penalty and the next thing you know, within a week or two, I know a circumstances within a week or two, they've done it again. They don't have peace. This morning, how many knows beyond a shadow of doubt that you made room for Jesus in your heart? How many knows beyond a shadow of doubt that if troubles do come or we have to look up and say, the Lord is my shepherd. Or, 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 or maybe the storms of life seems like they're just crashing in. And you may have not made room for Jesus in your life. Can you honestly say, man, Jesus has got a good thing going? say that. I mean, this Christmas, you know, if we didn't have a dollar, I've learned that it ain't the gift that we receive. It's the gift that's given. I mean, it's not all time the money or whatever. I can still remember So, so interesting or what, what's really pleasing that they had $40 to do a month. That's all they brought. Can you imagine living on $40? Yeah. My heart was great when I thought they didn't have enough for their sale, but yet they done for others. But every time we went down there, hey, Socks or something for us. When they turn the door, pull down that old dresser door, pull out that pair of white socks I left for me. But when Jesus came into my life and he took those old dark black ugly skins out of my life, <laughs> now you may still be doing that. Maybe somebody ain't told you that if you're seeing it, that it's totally wrong. If you're doing things that you shouldn't do, it's wrong. And I'm not saying that, that we don't falter or we fail or whatever. We, you look at somebody, but I'm going to look at somebody. I've got that line right. I don't look at nobody's life. I can't tell you what color clothes you got on. I wouldn't know when we went off. To be honest, I don't even know what Millie's wearing today. Because it doesn't matter. As long as it's decent and ordered, that's all I care. You see what I'm saying? Because of what Jesus said to us. This morning, somebody needs to, to, to make room for Jesus. If you're saved and you've been saved a long time and you've, you've got so busy and caught up in the hustle and bustle of life, cares of this life, and, and you've not led him in your life like you are to, this morning will be a good time to let him in. What about it this morning? Say it. Somebody's been a blessing to you. I want you to say thank you. Been a blessing.